Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here at Derek for our second special from the Spoken Wheel Show. And this week's special is all on taillights. Now, starting off with what makes a good taillight? One of the most integral parts of having a taillight that looks good is that it needs to be red. Now without that, you don't have a taillight. Can't be blue, can't be green, can't be clear. It needs to be red because it's at the tail, and therefore you can tell which direction the car is going because that is the function of a taillight. Exactly. Second of all, it has to look good. It has to, let me explain that for you. It has to match, like it belongs on the car. It feels that it should be, or it enhances the view from the side and the rear of the car. You wanna see that taillight. And it needs to not blend in, it shouldn't just kind of be there and you don't really notice it at all. It needs to really, you know, be proud to be there, you know? Be like, yes, I designed this tail. I didn't just stick a little thing on from the auto parts store. And lastly, it's a simple one, but stupid one, but it's a practical reason. It needs to work. If it doesn't work, it's not a tail light. Just an object. So moving on to the most iconic tail lights ever, and I think in my personal purview of iconic taillights is the 1959 Cadillac. Not that there's any bias being he owns three 1959 Cadillacs. No, 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 everyone agrees it's the 59 Cadillac. It is. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. 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 Right. Okay. Yes. Totally no influence here. Nope, nope. Next up, we have the Ford Mustang. Now this taillight, you might say, is it really that iconic? Well, we think about Ford Mustangs. It's always been the three bars, that kind of weird, I don't really know how to describe the shape. It bends backwards. Then the taillights is sequential. I just, I don't know. They, Ford's kept it for so long. It's, it's become iconic. It's always been basically on every single Mustang <laughs> ever produced. Even the Mustang Mach-E, which isn't really a Mustang. Which is, which is really a Mustang. But it's, it's, a, it's a Ford. It's under the pseudonym of a Mustang. It's a Ford. <laughs> it's a Ford. And next up, we have the Ferrari taillights. Now this one, you're gonna say, well, Ferrari taillights aren't really that iconic. However, they've always usually been circular of some form, whether there's two taillights or one taillight. And you look at this picture, we have a 328 and a 488. Cars are almost 40 years apart. And the point is with these taillights, they're circular, they're red, and all, even though these taillights are different, overall, it's the same circular Ferrari taillight that surprisingly you notice in so many Ferraris. Moving on to the smallest taillights ever. Basically every 1940s cars, you see the Cadillacs, especially the Chryslers and Ford, Chevys, every lineup, they all have these tiny taillights because back in the day, they weren't driving 70 miles an hour on the freeway. They also weren't driving at night or even driving. No, they were driving, they were driving. I mean, what's the point of having a car if you're not driving? You explain that to me, they're not driving, but yet I have a car. Okay. The BMW Z8, I mean, it's tiny. You it's, like, see, it's like an eyelash lid. It's a piece it's of paper. It's, it's a piece. I mean, Henrik Fisker was uh, really keen on this design, making it sleek and modern, and it has aged well, but I think Henrik Fisker designed a car that has taillights that are more like a whisker. Not that I made that rhyme. Whisker Fisker? <laughs> Next up, we have the Aston Martin Vulcan. Now you probably expected this one on the list. You could have put it maybe in best looking, but we put it in small because rather than a single taillight unit, it's a bunch of individual, I don't know what those are. Those sticks, look like uh, popsicles. Those popsicle sticks. Yeah, the you, end just, of you pull one out or like, a fuse. It's out. like a fuse. Yeah. You pull it out, yeah. you eat it. It's just, I don't know. It's an odd taillight for sure. Yeah. You see this side shot of it, it really looks odd. It's just, they're weird. So next up on smallest taillights, we have the Porsche 356. Now there were two versions. There was the one with the circly ones, but I want to come to the kind of rounded, egg-shaped egg thing, taillight square. I don't know what shape it really is. It's, it's sort of it's, it's a poorly drawn oval. Long, yes. Um, they're just very small and you kind of forget they're there. So small. Yeah, yeah. It's just a fact. Moving on to the largest, greatest, Hugest taillights ever is a 1967 Ford Thunderbird. It is so huge, so great. The bumper is smaller than the taillights. Yeah, that is correct. The bumper is smaller. Everything's smaller than the taillights. Just the rear end, just a taillight. Kind of like of the it. Dodge Charger's front end with just a grill. If you were to combine this and a Dodge Charger, you would get 
The Griddle. The Grill Tale. The Griddle. The Griddle. Ooh, that's a good name. Isn't that a frying pan? It is. It is a frying pan. The next up is a 1967 Chrysler Imperial. And as you can see, the bumper is technically there, and then it kind of goes up, and the, the entire rear end of the car is also a tail light. It's so. a bit weird because it has fins, but then it kind of has like a lower bumper thing, but it has the reverse lights. Then where the actual back end would be is just tail light, and then instantly it's onto the trunk. Very strange back end for sure. Next up, we have the 2021 Cadillac Escalade. I it's... think we've we've all seen. You've seen them. If you haven't seen them in the past, how many years they've been produced? Too many. Too many. It's years. weird. It just goes straight up, and it's it's like sticks or I don't know. Looks like two trees falling over. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the car kind of is falling over. <laughs> Next up, we have the 1954 Kaiser Fraser. And this car, you might say the taillights are small. Yeah, but if you have to look at the perspective, rather than stopping after going up, they continue down the, it the top of the car. It engulfs the entirety of the top fender, rear fender of the car. So while it looks small, they're about three feet long, which I for know. a taillight is actually massive. It's just strange, because I don't think that part's actually lit up anyways. Good news! What? The Dacia Sandero's taillights are the best looking ever. Yes! No. Yeah, just kidding. No, scratch that. Next up on iconic taillights, we have... The 1959 Cadillac. Not that he's biased because he owns three of them. Right. Right. You like them, right? Joey likes them. Right, Joey? Yes. Next up, we have the car that has taillights that just... They don't really end. The McLaren P1. They're very good looking taillights, I will say for sure. It's kind of cool. They just blend in. They're functional. And they're really long if you were to stretch them out. One of the best looking taillights ever is the Jaguar E Type. Here's a photo of an E Type. Oh, that's Not the wrong, wrong one. Wrong what? one. Look at that. Oh, my. This Jaguar E Type is one of the best looking taillights ever. And we say that because it's so, so nicely forms with the rear of the car. And this Jaguar E Type taillight is an actual Jaguar E Type taillight, unlike this mess. Looks thing. like a Nissan Murano. Mm. No Not one, a Murano convertible. No one drives a Nissan Murano. No one does, no one will, no one should. Moving on to the least functional taillights ever, we start with the Ford Model T. You might not even notice this car has a taillight. Yeah, you have to zoom in. And to that's see. because the taillight is so small, we have to zoom in to like that. And then on top of that, it isn't really bright either, so. There's no really point in having it. No. Next up, we have one of the most beautiful cars of all time, except it's not functional. The Pontiac Aztec. <laughs> we tried to do it straight. We tried to make that sound. We tried to help you, Pontiac. We are sorry, but... It's awful. We don't want to... Yeah, just... We don't want to see that car. The next car is the Ferrari California. And like the state of California, it's a bit confusing. As you look at the taillight, there are... Well, I mean, the rear end... There's quite a few taillights, and that's why I said the taillight. No, there's multiples. So you have the two top ones, which should be your brake lights and your turn signals. Except they're not, it's just the taillights. Then you have these, like, bottom ones near this weird grill, and they're your brake lights, and then turn signals are also there. Then the exhaust pipes are stacked on top of each other. Then you have the brake light on the trunk lid. I don't know what happened to this car. They just threw some stuff. Bits on the car. Bits. Bits. Next up, we have the BMW i3. It has taillights, they are functional, they're ugly, but on top of that, they, they're flat. They blend in because they're covered by glass. Now, if you look at this photo here, you can see what happens in an accident because it's covered by glass. The issue is, if you wanted to replace the taillights, you'd probably have to shatter the glass and remove it. So as my mom said about her Suzuki Samurai, it's a disposable car. We totally just dissed the Suzuki Samurai. <laughs> disposable car. Well, that's what she said. Real quote. Sorry, Suzuki. Um, if you have any complaints or concerns, send it to him, not to me. Yes, my email address is below right here. Although where I'm pointing is probably not where it is because <laughs> I don't really get choices of where to put it. We'll put it here as well. Right here. Multiple right. options. Right here. All right, you read it. Next up, we move on to designers versus engineers. This is where the designer has one idea and then the engineer has another idea to make it actually work, and they don't combine too well. We start off with a good-looking car, the Aston Martin Vantage. Very good-looking taillight, don't get me wrong. However, the issue is at night, 
they decided to make the tail light only the little side bit. It doesn't actually cover the whole bar. So we don't know if it's fake or not because we've seen pictures with the bar on. We don't know if it's a blizzard light or what it is. Again, it's a bit confused. The next cars are basically the variety of every 1948 to 1958 Cadillacs with the exception of the 56 to 58 Sevilles, which of course, as you would know, the gas filler thing is on the side. But basically why that is, is because the engineer said, well, we need the gas tank needs to be filled up right here. And then the designer said, no, we want a taillight there. What did they do? They made the taillight into the gas flap. Yeah, it's a bit odd, um, for sure. But it you, does conceal the, the, the gas filler. Because and it does look good. It, it helps does. with aerodynamics yeah. if that affects it. The one thing you wouldn't want to do is pull up to one of those self-fill gas stations in Oregon because I think the gas attendant would be a bit confused. Unless he happened to own a 1958 Cadillac, in which it should be another day at the Daisy Farm. Aerodynamic, you're driving a 10-ton tank around, Joe. You think, oh, this wind doesn't go down the side, but I should move the gas flap. Debatable. And debate. Then we have Teslas. Now, see, the thing about Teslas is it's a little tiny flap right on the side. It's a reflector thingy by the taillight, which goes this way, which I really want to break one one day but i it, it's so it, it you feel so weak but you plug it in there and that charges the car and uh, if you want to explain anything more about it now one thing mercedes did with their electric cars was they took the fuel filler cap and just turned that into the electric plug-in so it looks normal why tesla did the tail light i'm not exactly sure it's not ugly but it I don't know. People could easily forget that. Next up, we have the first generation Acura slash Honda NSX, depending on where you live. So it's just an NSX. This car, taillight wise, it looks good, but they went with one of those bar designs and it's only like the sides light up, but then there's the reverse lights in the middle, the brake light on the top, but then there could be a And then the light. wing has a light and reflector thing on it. And Some are reflectors, some are taillights. We just do not know. Moving on to any new Volvo. You might say this one trend is kind of exists and it has, but it's spread throughout the multiple cars. Now, on Volvo taillights, again, like the Cadillac, they just stick up like dead trees. And they've now done it on the station wagons and on the sedans, they're now falling over trees. <laughs> so the SUV straight up, the wagons starting to fall over and the sedans, they've fallen over. The evolution of the automotive, automotive taillight for Volvo. Yeah, not too good. Welcome to the rotisserie, and we're frying those taillights up right now on Roast My Ride. And we start off with the awful, 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 Acura ZDX. It's upside down, and then the taillight is also on the exhaust pipe, so it has four exhaust pipes, but it's a reflector, not a taillight, and then... This whole car was just a disaster. I mean, it doesn't even have a rear door handle. It does. Yeah, it does. But why would it be up there? Well, because... It's like a flap. I don't know. It should be a proper door handle. Well, why don't you submit a complaint? They don't make the car. That's true. They don't make the car. <laughs> they don't. There's a reason why. <laughs> then there's the Kia Soul. Now, see, we have one problem with these cars. 90% of the time, they're in barf green. Second of all, 90% of the time, they're in barf green. And lastly, the tail lights are so ugly, you don't want to look at them, so we don't know whether you're stopping or not. Then we crash into you. Then we're really happy. We got you off the road, but now my car is not on the road. But well, we did get the Kia Soul off the road. Yeah. Time to party. Then, of course, we could not leave the show without mentioning the Toyota Prius. Now, see, in the beginning of Toyota Prius's evolution of cars, they started off with something that looked like a Nissan Versa. <coughs> then they ended up with cars that don't look like cars, and now we want to run them off the road. Yes. These we... are the reason for road rage. So if you see us trying to get mad at you and get you off the road, please forgive us because you're driving a Prius. We do not want to have eye surgery because if we have eye surgery, we can't drive and then creates more crashes. And, and you then, see the trend. Yeah, you see what? See, it's a chain of chain reaction. If you just don't get, if you just get rid of the Prius, everyone would be happier. They would. So back in 1950, Bibli Bop, people used to drive the Rolls Royces. And Rolls Royces, you know, they're big cars. But now they got bigger and, and the taillights, they just, they just, they're just there. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
And the way Red they jelly. just yeah, the way they just sag, it's just it's, it's, it's weird. Sagging. And it just like it looks like some sort of scary ghost thing. Scary. It's just like scary. Not that that's scary. Moving on to some awful ones, we have the uh, generation I don't remember because it's the Honda Civic. We don't know. <laughs> this is the Type R. This is one of the European ones, and oh my, what happened? It ticks every box for an ugly tail. <laughs> Last but definitely, 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 definitely not, not the least, 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 worst looking tail lights ever is the PT Cruiser. Now, if you care to explain our quite disregard for these tail lights. The PT Cruiser is just <laughs> a disappointing car. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing exciting, nothing good, nothing cool, nothing interesting about it. Nothing remotely interesting. So the taillights followed. It's just like a penguin. Penguin? Uh, what kind of? You make the strangest analogy. I can't. Yeah, I don't really know. A penguin, like you say, oh, it looks like a pizza. Oh, <laughs> the the, the song. Now with a proper analysis, not that it doesn't look like a penguin. It's just you have the two side ones, and there's like this bottom taillight, and it's just bland and ugly. It's awful. There's more turn signals than there is taillight. Next up, we move on to the weirdest taillights ever. Taillights that just are different, and we start with the BMW i8. It's just part of it's been chopped away, or someone took a bite out of it. <laughs> kind of got the cheese cutter knife and sliced it down the side. Then, a nice precise German yeah. cut of cheese. I've got to admit, the car is nice as an electric car. Next up is a 1963 Chrysler Turbine, and that is because the taillights are actually inside the bumper. It's a jet car, but it kind of really gives that jet look to it with those... 90 these very weird looking like what do you how do you how would just you just things they just stick in and then it looks like a shark yeah it looks like a car it's going forward but it's in reverse or it's the rear or the front we don't know and of course we cannot forget the infamous and wholeheartedly unforgettable 1959 chevrolet impala this car it, it's a decent looking car it's just the taillights it looks like the guy got beat out his eyes are all dreary yeah not that that's how you would feel after watching our show <laughs> next up we have the 1958 edsel villager station wagon bermuda very long name for a very interesting car to say the least now the taillights are arrows except they're pointing into each other suggesting a potential crash or you're going to enter this zone kind of like in star wars so it's a bit of a weird car and then there's like a circle-y bit behind it and... It's reverse light, Joey. Yeah, but the reverse light's bigger than the tail light. Most of the time you're going forward, not backwards. Well, let's we'll say you're going reverse and then... Well. Next up, we have the Lexus LC. It's a decent looking tail light. Lexus claims there's only a single bar and that they use mirrors or something. I don't really know. It's pretty though, except it then continues down the side. It's like uh, an icicle. It starts out in the cave, nice and icy, and then all of a sudden it just drips. <laughs> It's like a waterfall countertop, but a waterfall taillight, except it's a turn signal. Next up, <laughs> we have the Land Rover LR4, the Discovery, and the Defender. Now, the LR4 was a weird car. I didn't really like it, but the only reason it was famous was because Top Gear used it as the camera car, so therefore it is in legendary status. Now, again, it's one of those cars where everything's off to one side, kind of like this. Uh, so kind of weird, and the taillights are just like circly clear things that are LED, and then it like it's tall, it's weird, and it's, I don't know, it's just... It's half a city block moving down the road. <laughs> yeah. Then we have the Land Rover Discovery, another car where the taillights are, again, all off for one car like this. Um, and again, the taillights are just like, they kind of long and continue, but then they're really small in retrospect to the entire car. Then the new Land Rover Defender. They're nice and squared, which actually looks cool. But one part I just noticed, and just noticed again, like I said, is there's two mini taillights at the side of those, so it's... I don't know what it is. Quadralites. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed watching the taillight special of the Spoken Wheel Show. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek, and thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Say goodbye. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>